This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. More on them later. It's 4.45 in the morning and I am driving over to a beach in Kirkland on the shore of Lake Washington. And it's a very special day because today is the day I will attempt to drive the HSS Banana Slug autonomous boat over 15 kilometers. Oh, there's my second alarm. <laughs> my last autonomous boat failed to complete this mission and it sank about three quarters of the way there. If you haven't seen the first video of the HSS Banana Slug, you should go check that out. It's just tuning and the build. Woo! I'm going over the 520 bridge right now and the lake is looking pretty glassy. I think I picked a good day to do this. Oh, it's just gooses. Okay. So I'm gonna launch the boat here, I think. Um, the dock is kind of high off the water over there. Is it? I can't tell. This camera is better in low light than my eyes. The lake is looking very calm. I feel good about this. So I've got a GoPro here that's fogging up. Uh-oh. Um, that's plugged into power so it can record extra long. Other than that, I've got the Pinpoint RC black box in here now. I've got the strobe light plugged in. Trimmed the propeller down a little bit. Those are the only real changes. So I'm out at the end of this dock. The boat's in the water and I'm going to get the waypoint mission uploaded here and then we'll put it in auto mode and cross our fingers. Auto. Go. All right, the boat's in auto mode. So graceful. So majestic. The haters said we couldn't do it, but we're doing it. Bye. Oh, first waypoint. God damn it, my computer just died. <laughs> that sucks. Um, but what I can do is check the Pinpoint RC black box app. So I have an RC plane and drone tracker on the boat right now. And this should allow me to follow along. Um, it's connected via a cellular connection. And it looks like it's showing it on there. Uh, it's not updating the location. Uh-oh. Huh. Well, we'll see. We got a long morning ahead of us. It's going all the way. We can't even see the other end of the lake. Somewhere way over there. So I'm back in the car. I plugged the computer in and I'm just barely getting a little bit of telemetry signal all the way from the street here. I think the, the signal's going through some apartment buildings, so it's pretty weak. But here's the full mission, 15 kilometers or so. So the next move is for me to drive over to this park here on the other side of the lake and to try and pick up a signal from there. The voltage is looking kind of low. Uh-oh. It might be because the batteries are cold. Hopefully the electronics uh, in the boat hull warm them up a bit. This is the 520 bridge, which means we're over the lake and the boat is out there somewhere. Little boat, big world. Wow, I just pulled up to the park and I am actually getting a signal. I'm very surprised about that. And according to the artificial horizon, it looks like it's not smooth out there. At least not as smooth as it was closer to the shore in Kirkland. I'm using the RFD 900X telemetry radio and it's working impressively well. The battery voltage is lower than I would hope. That's probably just because they're cold. I'm using the Relyon LIFE PO4 10 amp hour packs and they do have BMSs. So I'm hoping there's not some sort of fault in, the, in a few of the BMSs where like only one battery is giving power, for example, and the rest are not. That would be a real bummer. This low voltage that we're seeing in this early in the mission makes me think that could be something that's happening, but I'm not sure. We'll have to find out later. I don't think this battery used uh, milliamp hours estimate is correct because I think that's only based on what uh, mission planner is seeing. And uh, most of the time mission planner isn't getting any data, so it's not accurate. But we are moving right along. This is excellent. Almost at the park. I should go out there and uh, see if I can see it. Got a long ways to go though. There it is. Going along. 
Oh, that's awesome. Not a care in the world. All is well, except for that battery voltage. That has me a little nervous, but everything else seems like it's going perfectly. Okay, let's see if the FPV is getting any signal here. Oh, there's a little bit of a signal for sure. That's awesome. There do appear to be some little waves out there. It's not super calm. That thing is definitely moving faster than the catamaran that I first tried this mission with. Okay, well I need to try and keep up with this thing, so I'm going to head to the next park. We'll be driving right by the NOAA headquarters. Maybe they'll uh, snatch it up and use it for their whale research. So according to the black box, the boat is out here, and I am currently at a park right here. So I'll be waiting a little while until the boat arrives. Hmm. It's like 10 or 15 minutes later, and judging by the black box position, it does not seem to be moving very fast. Well, maybe I'll go out there and uh, see if I can pick up a telemetry signal. I really like being conscious at 5 a.m. Everything is so peaceful. Any lights out there? Yup, there's one straight ahead. I don't know if that's the boat. You know what, it probably is the boat. Maybe if I climb this lifeguard chair, I'll get better telemetry signal. That light is pretty far away. I can't tell for sure, but I definitely think it's the boat. Oh yeah, I can see it flashing now. Okay, that's definitely the boat. Okay, let's get some telemetry going. The battery voltage is pretty much exactly the same as it was before, so that's making me happy. We're still doing pretty good on our ground speed, about one point, probably two or so meters per second on average. All the air inside the hull is trapped, so as the electronics get warm, it heats up, and hopefully that'll kind of heat the batteries up and uh, let the voltage climb a bit. This is taking a while. Definitely have some time to spare. May as well break out Raid Shadow Legends. You might have heard it already, but let me tell you why. There's never been a better time to dive in and start playing Raid Shadow Legends. It is officially two years old this month. They have a huge lineup of social events, including gifts, free stuff, and a party atmosphere in the community. Raid is only getting bigger and better, and I'll tell you why. It's now the best time to get started. Raid is the number one RPG game in the US with over a million plays every day. Raid wants to thank all its awesome players for joining the game. There's lots of great competitions, cosplay, songs, and good times to be had. Come join the party and celebrate with Raid. My favorite part about the game is all the awesome champions and their skills. And the PvP arena battles are awesome. For the two year anniversary, they've got tournaments and events running from March 1st all the way through the middle of April, all of them with insane prizes to win. They're also releasing the first champion of the Shadowkin faction, which I can't wait to see. Click on the link in the description or scan the QR code to get a free epic champion. 100k silver, 50 gems, and 3 ancient shards, so you can hit the ground running. New player rewards will only be available for 30 days here in the inbox. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends. Now back to the video. What was that? It just started bobbing a bunch. Whoa, weird. That strobe light is so bright. It's being powered by the LumiBoost LED driver. It's a new high power LED driver I helped develop. If you haven't checked it out already, definitely do so. It's pretty awesome. Wow, is that a log out there? Damn. Gotta do push-ups to stay warm. Now it's just paralleling the shore. And this is a tricky section because the entire shore of this part of the lake is lined with houses. There's no parks or anything to get water access. So I kind of have to creep around the neighborhood here and look for little spaces in between the houses to get line of sight to the boat. In the last video, there were about a million comments telling me how terrible of a boat builder I am and that this whole design is literally offensive. But I don't know, if you ask me, it looks like it's doing the whole boat thing pretty well. I definitely agree that boats are not my forte, you know, kind of more of an airplane guy myself. But uh, this one's doing pretty good so far. It's definitely not optimized for stability or efficiency, but that's all right. It just needed a little extra ballast, uh, 12 pounds extra, but who cares? The word keel popped up about a thousand times in the comments, and I did think about adding a keel, but like a sailboat style keel that sticks down really far is a total no-go because that would just get caught on lakeweed. I learned that with my first autonomous boat, that lakeweed is a big problem. I definitely could have done like a viking boat style keel that kind of runs down the whole length of the hull, 
and isn't as deep. But then you can't set the boat down. You need a boat stand. It's just more, ugh. it's just harder to deal with versus just throwing some sandbags in there and calling it good. And also I was talking about big container ships and people were saying that those don't have flat bottoms, but they totally have flat bottoms. Do a Google image search for container ship hull. And, uh, it's, and it's pretty clear, the biggest ones have flat bottoms. So I don't think flat bottoms are all that terrible. If I were building another boat, I would definitely not make a flat bottom, but like, it's not the end of the world. It's, it's doing its thing right now. Anyways, off to the next park. I managed to find this little beach kind of sandwiched in between two houses here. So the battery is still at 12.8 volts, which is the nominal voltage for this battery. The minimum recommended cutoff voltage is 11 volts, and the BMS cutoff voltage is 8 volts. So once we get down to 8 volts, then we're totally screwed, the boat will just turn off. But if we can make it to the final destination park before 11 volts, then we're totally good. And it's been at 12.8, 12.7-ish volts for a long time, so I am highly confident in this. We can see the strobe light going out there. I'm really glad I put the strobe light on because that's all I can see from the shore. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna see if I can find a temperature for the flight controller. Raw temp, maybe that's it. Nope, <laughs> unless this means 30, eh, no, 31 degrees Celsius, maybe. Hey Siri, convert 31 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. 87 degrees in the boat, I can see that being accurate, although I have no idea if this is in centigrees, I don't, I don't even know. From the FPV signal, it looks like the water is really flat out there. It was kind of cool actually, at first I was not getting a very good signal at all, but when I put my hand up behind the antenna, the signal got a lot better. So I guess kind of needed to make a little ground plane for it or something. Dang, so we started... Let's see, we started right here, that's the home point, and now we are way over here, so we're almost done. I might just go to the final location now and uh, see if I can pick up a radio signal from a really long ways away. I'm in the car driving to my next location, and the road kind of stays pretty close to the lake. So I'm going to see how much telemetry signal I can get while I'm driving. I'm getting hungry. Should have brought snacks. I think the boat is a little bit further ahead than I am right now. Also, this is pretty close to where the last boat sank. So now I'm kind of going over the backside of a hill, um, losing line of sight to the lake. So I think I'm definitely gonna lose telemetry signal at this point. Yep, looks like I lost it. But maybe it'll appear back again at some point. Oh, I just got a little bit of signal. <laughs> That's crazy. The RFD 900X is going through a metal car door and a bunch of apartments and then probably a half mile out to the lake. That's pretty impressive if you ask me. It seems like it's working better this time around, probably because I have the antennas on the boat up higher. Wow, the sun's coming through the fog. That's so pretty. Damn, I'm getting telemetry signal and I'm pretty much at the park. That's pretty good. I do wish the Pinpoint RC Black Box app would show your phone's current location as well. That would be nice. I'm just heading to the final destination. I'm so happy because my boat's doing awesome. The battery is still at 12.8 volts. I'm walking through goose poop and mud, still doing one meter per second. Everything is good. The world is a beautiful place. Here we are. This is it. Wow, it's foggy. Our final destination. The boat should just drive itself right onto the shore if I don't intervene, but I think I'll probably take control before it does that. I'm looking for a light. Oh, I see a light. Let's see, where did that thing go? Now I don't see it. Oh, wait, could that be it? I don't see anything else shiny out there. Beautiful, pretty majestic out here. I think what I was seeing earlier might have just been a reflection off a building and not the actual boat. Where that boat at? There's a lot of buoys out there for water skiing, presumably. Hopefully those don't cause issues. But according to the telemetry, it's still going. Hmm, inspiring. Maybe I'll have to do an autonomous ground effect vehicle next, or an autonomous amphibious plane. 
Oh. Well, well, well. If it isn't, probably the boat. I see it now. Little light out there in the in the fog. Looks like it's a clear shot right to me. Come home, baby. Oh yeah, it's totally kind of going in and out of the fog. Especially when the camera's way down close to the water like this. Wow, look at all these peanuts. Ooh, those look inedible. They're like oddly transparent. Land ho, baby. The SS Banana Slug is coming in hot. Okay, I'm gonna turn this thing on so I can take control, flip it into manual mode. Maybe I will just let it crash into shore. Wait, what? It just stopped. <laughs> Maybe when I turned that on, it put it in manual mode? That must have been it. I'm gonna uh, do actions, set mode to auto. Now what happened? Is it going back? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. So now it's uh, continuing. So majestic. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Well, that was all too easy. I might have to try a longer waypoint mission. Okay, I'm gonna drive it over here to see if the GoPro is still recording. <laughs> it sure is. Oh, joy. Wow, look at that. 15 kilometers later. It looks exactly like it did. <laughs> looks exactly like it did before. Good job out there, SS Banana Slug. Uh, it might run a. Sh oh, geez, hit a log or something. I'm trying to do a little waypoint mission here close to shore to get some shots of it, but I might end up stuck in the muck. I wasn't able to get any good data from the ArduPilot log file. It seemed to be corrupt. But from the telemetry screen recordings, we can assume the boat was pulling about 1.5 amps on average for the 3.4 hour duration of the 13.5 kilometer mission. From that we can calculate that the boat used a total of 5.1 amp hours of current. That's 370 milliamp hours per kilometer. So we have 6 10 amp hour batteries on board. To be safe, we should only assume that we have access to about 70% of that, which leaves us with about 42 amp hours. Using the 370 milliamp hour number we arrived at earlier, that means this boat should be able to drive 113.5 kilometers on a charge. That would be 28 hours of driving. So it's safe to say this boat is a bit over-equipped for this mission. There are some really long lakes out in eastern Washington. Maybe I'll plan a mission out there in the future. Now in celebration of that successful mission, I'm going to turn the motor PWM all the way up for the first time. So let's see, 15, I'll go to 2,000, go to 2,000, and the air motor, set that to 2,000 as well. That's full throttle right there. I wouldn't say it rips, but it's definitely a lot faster. Yeah, I think this boat is better as a long duration efficiency boat and not a speed boat. Now I know I haven't even finished the tracks project yet. Um, I guess quick update on that. The mold is being made right now, so it's well underway. I'm super stoked about it. But once that project is finished, I'd like to potentially do another Kickstarter campaign for a vacuum formed polycarbonate boat hull. Now I know all you smug nautical people are thinking, oh no, it's gonna make another crappy boat hull. But this one would be good. It would be like a more conventional V design. Anyways, it's just an idea at this point. So if any of you are interested in that, let me know. It would be a clear polycarbonate boat hull. So you'd be able to like put cameras inside that would see down into the water. I think it'd be pretty cool. Closing remarks, I'm happy to have finally redeemed my long distance waypoint mission on Lake Washington and I'll have to do a longer one for next time because this thing is very capable. I think everyone that said this boat was a piece of garbage was underestimating it because it works fine. A trustworthy vessel I would say. There's no water in there, it's totally dry. Anyways, that was fun. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, bye.